Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. I'm glad to see you again, once again. And glad to have this opportunity to come to you on YouTube. And um, in this session, we're going to talk about cultural living. Not only comparative to what Christians do, how they live, but also about different nations that resides here in the U.S. and those. I don't want to forget you brothers and sisters out there in, the in Kenya, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, South Africa. I don't want to forget about y'all. And uh, also uh, uh, Solomon Islands. I didn't know that... Um, it went that far, but I understand why now uh, the Holy Spirit had me to create, my wife and I, to create this website because it reaches many of you and you can pass the word on in terms of kingdom living. Uh, but we want to talk about culture, your culture. And I want to, I want to lay this on you. Laws and principles develop cultures. And you can say that really vice versa. The culture consists of the laws which make it uh, a lifestyle, how you live, how you dwell. And I want to say this um, in, comparative, in comparative to those who... Um, those who call themselves uh, Christians. Now, I want you to understand this. If you, um, I'm going to name some denominations and organizations uh, like Baptist, Methodist, uh, Episcopalian, um, I can go on, Church of God in Christ, um, Nazarene, uh, Latter day Saints, I can go on. But all these things have one thing in common, two things in common, really. They're religions and they all have kingdom principles and they all go under the heading of Christianity. Now, those, when I was growing up, that's all I knew about was Christianity, and I thought that was it. But as I began to learn and to study God's Word down through the years, I discovered, the Holy Spirit brought to my attention, that the kingdom of God wasn't a religion. And it wasn't, it was a government. That's what it was. That's what it is. It's a government. And in order for you to understand that clearly, you must listen to what uh, the Lord Jesus stated uh, when he first came on the scene. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't say uh, religion or uh, Christianity or another group, but he said the kingdom. And the kingdom is a government. It's what divides that by far from any religious group. Now, now, when you go under, in this country, on this globe, when you go under the heading Christian, Islam, Muslims, you're going under a religion, and you're going to have conflict because everybody's trying, every religion is trying to get you to join their religion, some by force, uh, some through coercion, but in any event, the kingdom of God is a government. Now, there's certain things in culture, like I was raised in uh, New York. You can rightly call me if you had to relate to this uh, down here as a New Yorker. Now, there's a street called Canal Street, especially when you come out of the Harlem Tunnel. Um, you're, it's a big street called Canal Street. And as you drive down there, you have on one side of Canal Street, just before you get to the Manhattan Bridge, Chinatown. 
you have the other side of Canal Street, which is Little Italy. And by the way, I've been to both of them, uh, more so than Little Italy, than Chinatown. I've been there a lot, too. And what I found was this. The culture in Chinatown was like the culture in this in country, in mainland China. You can go to Chinatown and get everything, the culture foods, but you will not find a hot dog store, a hot dog stand, Mexican food, not in Chinatown. You will not find Greek food. Italian food, French food, not in Chinatown. Why? Because it's not their culture. Their food identifies their culture. Now, when you're going to uh, Little Italy, you'll find a lot of authentic cuisines, Italian cuisines. And by the way, you'll find a lot of them, uh, Chinese uh, uh, cuisine in Chinatown, and it's just to walk on one side of the block street to the other side, and you're in a whole new different culture. And they dress accordingly to their culture. Now, you also can drive further down, right over the bridge in Brooklyn, you can go to uh, what they call American, New York. They have many different uh, uh, foods over there. But nothing, if you want a good, authentic cuisine, Chinese food, you go to Chinatown. And it represents who they are. The same thing with the kingdom of God. There's certain way, certain standards they maintain in Chinatown and Lu Italy. In Koreatown, you have even Japanese community, uh, Korean community, Mexican community, all in New York. That's one thing about New York. If you want to really run into a lot of uh, cultures, you can do it uh, in New York. And the food there are more authentic when you go to their community. Now, the same thing with the kingdom of God. Let's deal with the culture. There's a certain way they talk, a certain way they, they conduct themselves. And like I said, the Chinese do not sell steaks. Do not have, they do not have uh, 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 French, French restaurants in their community. No, because it's Chinese. And the same thing with the Italians. The same thing with, with, with the French or, or, or the Koreans. They have that that represents their culture. I want you to understand this one thing. Basically, excuse me, that the laws in your country, you represent the way your country is. Paul, when he was changed from the old man to the new man, when, when he was born again, he represented the kingdom. Now, there are many, you know, you can, I, I, I'm going to read something. Let's, let's, I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians, um, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse. I want you to understand something. When you're a kingdom citizen, remember this. You're not from this world. What causes you to become a kingdom citizen is when you're born again. Your spirit is born again. So when you're born again, you're not no more of this world. Oh, you live in this three-dimensional world, your body, your soul, and your spirit. But you're not from this world because you're born again. So you have to go learn to learn how to live. And that's why you have the Constitution, God's Constitution. Many of you call it the Bible. But it's important that you embrace this because it will help you to develop the behavior and standards that the kingdom, a kingdom citizen, 
has to live by. It's a certain standard. You just don't live any kind of way. You have commands, you have principles, and you, the king laid down these principles. The Lord God laid down these principles long ago, and Jesus came to confirm it, to fulfill it. Listen, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter in the 12th verse. Now, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthians, and listen to what he says. All these things are lawful for me. But all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but all, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, he knows who he is. He knows his position. He knows his standard of living. There's a lot of things he could do, but he don't do because he has a certain standard. The kingdom says... There's a lot of things. See, you, you, you could, you, 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 many of you don't realize that you, you don't do things because you have certain standards. There's certain things that I won't do because I have certain standards. There's certain individuals that I won't allow to talk any type of way in my presence because I have a certain standard. This is a kingdom citizen. And I want to say this. If you permit people to say what they want to say in your presence, without you saying it, and that goes against your principles and your standards, then you have opened the floodgate for them to come and do it on a regular basis. I don't. For example, an individual or individuals who are married or who, who are uh, those who are married and they have girlfriends on the side. I don't interact with those individuals. That's not my life. That's not who I am. Those individuals who have girlfriends and, and living together as if they're married, I don't interact with them. I don't have uh, friends like that. Why? Because it doesn't set a good precedent. It's not who I am. I don't do it. I don't associate with those individuals. It's like those that I, I don't associate with people that smoke or want to say anything they want to say uh, around me. I, I don't associate, and I make it very plain. That's not who I am. Now, I don't have to go out and bless them out. No, no, no. I just let them know that's not who I am, and I know where to exit. I know where I came in. I know where I go out. It's standards. In the kingdom of God, you have standards. Listen, Paul's stating here. He says, you know, he said... It, 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 it's lawful. I can do anything I want, but all things are not expedient for me. It's not good to do. It's not good to allow certain people to come into your, 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 your environment and contaminate it with their culture. My culture standards are different from others' individuals. And my wife said the other day, that effect today, she said, yeah, we are different. That's right. Because we go along according to God's word. Now, uh, the Christians, they can do what they want to do. They have step. And they, they do what they want. They have the principles, but they don't obey. They obey when it pleases them. Kingdom citizens don't because they realize that they have to live according to his word. He is the one that created us. We didn't create ourselves. We need to get over ourselves and think we all of that in a bag of chips. Now, listen to this. We go on. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will destroy both it and them. Now, nobody is not for the, now the body is not for sexual immorality, but, the, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. In other words, you know, just because you, 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 you come to this point in your life that you, you commit anything else as immoral, sexual immorality, you, you, you have sex with a, a woman that's uh, not your wife. Men having sex with one another. Women having sex with one another. Hey, you know, if you want to live that way, that's the way of the world. And they're, they're quote-unquote Christians that live that way. But no, a kingdom citizen doesn't indulge in that. He doesn't even be around those who do such things. 
He separates himself. One scripture says in one part of the Constitution, he separates ourselves from, from these type of things. Because all they're going to do is contaminate your environment. You have to check yourself and find out where you are. If you're a Christian, you do say, hey, you got a problem. A kingdom citizen doesn't because he knows that he has to answer to the king. And you see, another thing, you know, by you doing such things, you hinder others from coming into the kingdom of God. You, you hinder them. They see you doing such things, say, hey, what's the difference between that dude and that dude? Religions are come above fire. You know, my wife says something that I am writing about now. She says, religion and Christians, whether the denomination, they misrepresent who God and his son is. Down through the years, they have been doing it for years. The Crusades, they misrepresent those Christian killing Muslims. What? That's a misrepresentation of who God is. He's not that. If Jesus wanted to destroy and kill, and kill, he had plenty of time to do it when he was down here before he was crucified. That's not who he is. There will come a time when he will judge the world. But it wasn't then and it isn't now. But there will come a time. So don't sweat the small stuff. Don't debate with anybody on religious uh, statements and religious arguments. You're not of a religion. You're of a nation, a kingdom. That's who you are. You're a citizen of the kingdom. You're not a Christian. And many of you get in arguments because you don't know who you are. You don't know your position. Let me read, go on and read. Now, this is Paul speaking. Listen, now the body is not for sexual morality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise up by raise up us by his power. Now let's go on. Do you not know that your body are members of Christ? I'm, I, I gotta reiterate that. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? See, embrace what this is. That's why I always say, you cannot go to a, a, a church or many, I call them religious institutions or in the religious in entertainment centers and hope to find the kingdom. You won't because they don't teach the kingdom concept because they don't know it. The kingdom concept, excuse me, is a mindset. And it comes through studying the mindset of the king. It's a mindset that when you speak, you're not thinking about many traditions and customs, but you're thinking about the Word of God and how it applies in your life. Remember, you are the temple of the living God. God doesn't live in buildings, big uh, uh, pavilions with 10,000 seats and 15,000 seats. He doesn't live in that. He lives in here. The Holy Spirit lives in here. He guides you. He will guide you if you want to be guided. He will lead you if you want to be led, if you permit him to lead you. He will. But you have to submit your will to his will. A kingdom citizen is one that lives according to the Lord God's constitution. He walks it. It's his behavior. It becomes a lifestyle. The culture, the laws, you develop a lifestyle that you have a certain standard that you live by. 
that you allow to reflect to those around you. You don't have to walk around with the sign and say, I love Jesus. And everything. Live that life. The, the, the Holy Spirit will radiate. Things will happen in your life that people will want to come and find out what's going on in your life. Learn to embrace the concept of the kingdom. Many have a religious concept to this day, but you have to study God's word in such a manner that your mindset will change. Okay, at this time, I want you to know that your greatest asset is your faith in the word of God. Remember that, because it's God's word that will last. And if you have a problem with that and understanding, just go to Mark 13, chapter 31st verse, and it will help you out what the Lord Jesus said. Heaven and earth will pass away, but by no, by, by no means, by no means, my word will pass away. Until next time. Thank you.